Hey there, I'm Alan Furstenberg. I'm Xavier Portilla. And we are Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Hey everyone, Mark is out again this week um, and there have been some interesting Alexa um, announcements. So I asked uh, Xavier to come on and talk about them. And, and for starters, Xavier, am I pronouncing your name correctly or at least close to correctly? It's, it's Xavier, the X is an S. Xavier. Did, did, I, did I get closer that time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I invite Xavier on the uh, on the show to, to talk about it. Um, why don't you, you introduce yourself a bit? Um, where are you from and uh, what, do, what do you do these days? Yes, I'm from, from uh, Valencia, Spain, but currently living in Madrid. So yeah, I'm Spanish. And I work uh, as a head of cloud uh, at VoiceFlow. And right now I am visiting the VoiceFlow offices here in, in Toronto, in Canada. And yeah, VoiceFlow, for the ones that are, don't know about it, is basically the, the, the conversational AI uh, platform to the world. You can design and launch your, your assistants with you know, no code, drag and drop block, super easy. And, and in less than, I don't know, like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, you have an assistant running. So yeah, I'm working, I'm working there. I think you are like a wide user as well of voice <laughs> right? Um, I'm actually a very infrequent user. I really only hit, hadn't used it until a couple of months ago when I did it for um, the prompt hackathon that VoiceFlow was a sponsor of. True, 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 with OpenAI. Yeah, and that got me into it. That got me really excited about um, about what VoiceFlow can do. So uh, I feel like we're gonna, we're gonna have to bring you back on a future show to talk about VoiceFlow and what's going on there, because I know a lot is happening. Um, yes, yes. But, uh, so, but before we get to, to the stuff that's with uh, Alexa, um, can you tell a little bit about how you got into this industry? What your background is? Yeah, so that's um, that's quite interesting. So I I started like in this, you know, like uh, conversational AI feel like in twenty nineteen uh, when Alexa uh, arrived to to Spain basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I I don't know, I don't remember like when or how I read like there were like apps for, for Alexa that, that are basically the Alexa skills, there are voice apps that are running on, on your Alexa enabled devices. So when I thought about it, it was like, okay, so in Alexa, we can create really cool things, like not just basic skills that reproduces random sounds or you know or white noise noises or something like that is like you can create things that could help people you know so that was basically why i've started so since since 2019 i was like kind of advocating you know for for alexa like uh, i wrote a, a a book in spanish and and also in english mm. called the alexa revolution uh, that you know like it's uh, from from zero to hero in in Alexa skill development and and I give like a bunch of talks and 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 I wrote like a bunch of articles about um Alexa and, and also about tooling because I love like how uh can we integrate in the, in the developer ecosystem the developer tools in the conversational AI uh, developer stuff, you know, like how can we create or make the conversational AI developers' lives easier? So that was uh, the ma the main thing. That was that was that was how I started and how it's going right now, and that's why I joined VoiceFlow. <laughs> okay, now. I know because I, I see you on the forums all the time. You also uh, write and talk about dialogue flow on, sure. on Google side. So what's what's your involvement with dialogue flow? And, and we're probably gonna have to talk about some updates that have come to dialogue flow recently another time. So we're gonna have you on quite a bit, I suspect in the future. Yeah. Um, so what's your, what's your involvement with dialogue flow? Yeah, so the dialogue flow CX involvement, of course is like, 
newer, you know, like uh, because I started on the like Google ecosystem with Google Assistant, with Google mm. Action, which is the same as Alexa's kids, but for Google Assistant. What happened is that um, Google Assistant, the Google Actions uh, were sunset uh, last last month on June, yes. unfortunately. But you know, like I, I created a bunch of articles as well and a bunch of talks about how to create Google Actions. And at the end, like the, the platform, the 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 um the actions console is quite similar, like the engine under the hood is quite similar to the Dialogflow CX1, which is the, the newer version of Dialogflow. Um so yeah, what I did is uh, also like not only having like a focus you know on, on on voice like making this like wider and and create content just like for conversational ai like no matter the channel which is i think the great path you know um so yeah that's 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 what i did and 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 on cx uh what i in the Aloflow cx what, what i did as well as like creating a bunch of content. I developed the CX CLI, which is a CLI that you can uh, automate. Uh, you can interact with your assistants, with your agents, and you can automate a bunch of, you know, like things in your CICD pipelines, in your day-to-day -day development. So yeah, that's that's what I did. Okay, so very good. Um, we're going to have to return to all of this, like I said, but for now, one of you know, there have been a couple of uh, recent announcements that have been coming out of Amazon Alexa, and I think one of the one that caught my eye was that they announced that there was going to be a new slot type that was available. And yes. for for those that aren't terribly familiar with slot types, you know, on, on the Google side, these were sometimes called entity types. Um, this is a built-in slot type that lets you define what the uh what what kind of parameters for a user's phrase might be so this way if they said something like you know i want to order uh 10 apples that that 10 uh is a slot or would would be a, a representation of a slot with a a slot type of amazon number for example and there are a number of other built-in slot types like uh date uh, time, phone numbers, there are some cities, city, you know, so, and then you can also define some of your own. Um, one of the real challenges, though, has been for kind of more esoteric and, and weird ones like um, postal codes and, and other things that are a lot harder to define. Uh, so, so what's this new type that they've announced? So the new type is the Amazon dot alphanumeric, which is in public beta, except Arabic for now. But as you said, uh, like there are weird scenarios or different scenarios that uh, that require uh, like this kind of slot. So for example, let's say that you create an Alexa skill that in, here in Spain, for example, you can know the, the year of your car, okay? Just telling the, uh, the, the plate, okay? Oh, interesting, okay. So for these kind of things, if you wanna create an Alexa skill and, and you have to spell the, your plate, before this slot was super, super complex. But with this slot right now, you can spell alphanumeric things like one, two, three, four, um, H, W, Z, for example, and it will transform that into the into a real value, into a string. And then you can manage that super easy. So and you are you you and me, uh, Allen on on the on forums, on on Slacks, you know, the, on the the Alexa official community, we have seen a bunch of questions like, how can I, uh, or how how is the best way to to get the phone number, for example? It was was complex because, for instance, the phone number depends on you know like the country, you know like mm -hmm. for instance, I think the 
that the US or Canadian numbers are fully different than the European ones or the Spanish ones, you know? So with this slot, it solves a bunch of issues like that. So I'm so happy to see to see this happening. And, and yeah, and I, and I think like under the hood, like all the ML stuff that is running to, to have these recognitions are like quite, quite, quite complex. So yeah, kudos to the Alexa team to, to release this thing. I'm quite happy. And it is gonna solve from the conversational AI design perspective, a bunch of issues. No, I definitely agree. You know, I think previously um, we would have to, you know, I've seen workarounds like telling people, you know, um, give the license plate number and say a word for each letter. Yeah. Or, you know, people would have to be trained in the international alphabet. So they'd say something like, you know, Alpha, Bravo, Zulu, 429. And maybe it would pick it up and maybe it would somehow treat the number to you know the number two is the word to and it was it was very messy what you had to do to 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 get this information out um, yes and now it, it's a lot simpler um so i think this is a great change you know uh i i do think it was interesting that it's not available in arabic i'm kind of um it's not available in arabic but it is available in some of the uh, the Asian languages, which I thought was interesting. So yeah. I'm I'm, I'm kind of curious to see eventually how that will will work its way out. Um, yeah, but it's a a great a great addition. I think the the next one, if I have to pick like what the next slot or kind of thing, I would say like a, a regular expression one that would be nice as well. A regular expression one. Yeah. Yeah. And that's interesting because that is a, that that's been available in dialogue flow for a while and it's been available on some others. Yes. Um, it does pose a lot of additional challenges though. It it would be interesting and and one of the things that I guess is now possible is that you could certainly uh enforce that sort of thing yourself using this alphanumeric type. Yeah. And get the type and then, you know, check it against a regular expression yourself. And exactly. this makes it that sort of thing a lot easier to do. Exactly. Exactly. No. So any other thoughts? No, no, no. So happy and and happy to see like what what is gonna come on the Alexa ecosystem. And yeah, because everything that you know like comes to the to the Alexa ecosystem that makes you know like the the development easier is is widely welcome you know definitely agree so um it's not a huge update but i think it, it's it's one that certainly has a lot of potential to make a lot of skills just a little bit um easier for users to use and that's kind of important in the end so yeah. you know as always we'd love to hear people's feedback you can uh, leave comments here or um on twitter or linkedin What's the best place that uh, that people can find you if they want to follow you and uh, ask you some questions? So that would be Twitter at Shavidop. That is going to be the, the place, I think. Very good. So again, thanks for joining us today. And uh, everyone else, we will see you another time on Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. See you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.